News First News Line with Faraz Shabdali. And a wonderful evening to you and welcome to Newsline Live. And although the weather's pretty bad out there, today we start on time. All our technical difficulties are behind us. And uh, we've got a wonderful guest who's going to explain uh, the seriousness of uh, what has happened uh, today uh, when uh, the um, Chinese embassy, uh, the commercial office of the Chinese embassy in Colombo, decided to... Uh, uh, blacklist the People's Bank of Sri Lanka. Uh, my dear, goodness me, it's terrible news. But uh, things, we will explain them. And of course, none other than, uh, no better person in fact, uh, somebody with a banking background. And he's a politician. Mr. Eran Vikramatna, very good evening to you. Good evening for us. Now then, what is all this business? This, this People's Bank has been blacklisted by the Economic and Commercial Office of the Chinese Embassy in Sri Lanka for failing to make the payment according to a letter of credit and the contract between two parties. Um, my, I, I know you're going to explain this, but my initial reaction to, to this is what absolute tosh, because uh, if anything, the, uh, the Economic and Commercial Office of the, of the Chinese Embassy should be blacklisting that blessed company for sending dodgy uh, fertilizer into this country? Uh, <coughs> as far as uh, uh, it depends on the facts of the case. Mm. The uh, facts are a bit thin on the ground. Yes, the first thing I would say is that it's very unfortunate that yeah. People's Bank has got blacklisted because People's Bank is uh, one of our two largest state banks. Mm and a very important bank right, for the country and for the economy. And it's a very serious matter mm. if a bank like the People's Bank is blacklisted mm -hmm. because uh, lots of trade in particular yeah. go through the People's Bank, mm. right? And uh, when you're blacklisted, there can be lots of other implications outside the immediate transaction that is being mm. referred to. It's very unfortunate that the Chinese embassy had issued this statement uh, because I, because the uh, thing is generally trade is between two commercial entities. Yes. Commercial entities may or may not be government owned. They can be even private entities, but they're trade transactions. Mm. And actually trade transactions should be resolved at the trading level rather than government agencies and embassies and all getting involved in it. Yeah. So that, that's, that's, that raises the issue to a different level. Now, no that level, that level is, I'm not a politician, okay, I'm just a member of the public. That level seems to me that the People's Republic of China are used thinking that we are some province of, of theirs and they can dictate to us what to do. We've got our own constitution, we've got our own president. And, and by the way, the People's Bank was set up long before our dear president was born. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, very, very unfortunate because uh, uh, governments getting involved in particularly in trade transactions and uh, trade disputes like this. Mm. So now when, a, when you want to import something, you go to a bank and you open a letter of credit. So yeah. presumably the importer, and here I think it is probably Sri Lankan state-owned corporations, companies importing. Yeah. Uh, and then with the letter of credit, you import it. And generally in the letter of credit, you will state what the documentation should be. Right. So sometimes amongst the various documents of the specifications, you agree with the seller. Mm. And here it's a Chinese uh, corporation is selling it. Uh, the specifications on, on, on the fertilizer, uh, it can be food item or whatever. And then uh, normally if it is a biological, bio-related item like food or fertilizer, mm. which can harm an individual or can harm a soil or an environment, right, it should be particularly careful. So the documentation should normally ask, right, say, that even before you ship it from that country, provide us with some international certification. Mm. that this really fits the particular specs we are asking for and among them because this is a bio-related project, mm. right, uh, a product that, that, that this is clear of whatever, you know, <coughs> uh, biological, you know, viruses, things that can get, uh, you know, translated into this country, into this soil. Yeah. 
then also there can be an added uh, requirement you might say that once it comes here that a local standards institution also should provide a certification that this is clear right mm. based on the negotiations that have gone between buyer and seller. Yeah. So, when you come to the bank, the bank looks at the conditions right of the LC right and then they will look whether all those conditions have been met. If they have been met, they will say yes, you can clear the goods, they will stamp it and then the bank will make the payment. So, they will make if the payment after the goods are cleared or before? No, no. no On arrival? No, the goods are cleared when the bank approves the documents. Bank has to say irrelevant so. of whether the, yeah, because, the the captain has released the goods. Yeah, because, the yeah, because because there can be discrepancies, right, mm. in the documents, and yeah. then if there are discrepancies in the documents, the bank can say the payment can't be made. Mm. You see, the payment can't be made. So people who are taking mm, delivering the goods, uh, right, will want their payment. No, yeah. So the payment can be uh, can't be made. So the question here is whether the importer of the goods had put all these specifications very clearly and told the exporter of the good and whether it was there and whether those criteria were met. Now, when the People's Bank looked at it, there are two possibilities. One possibility is the criteria was met. Yeah. If the criteria was met, People's Bank should have gone ahead, cleared the goods and made the payment. Okay. Mm. If the criteria is not met and there are discrepancies, right? whatever the standards were, the standards haven't been met, then clearly People's Bank can refuse to actually uh, uh, make the payment saying that there are discrepancies. Yes. In this case, yeah. right, the added complication comes in because we read in the media right, that the People's Bank has issued a statement saying that a Sri Lankan court has given them an order not to pay, you see. So, that is the unusual part in this. Yes, but it's un I was about to come to that. Uh, whilst the uh, People's Bank are, uh, as bankers, are trying to be true to the nature of the letter of credit, which generally is uh, irrevocable and confirmed uh, letter of credit, and so you know, as you say, the documentation is right and presumably in those documentations ought to have been the testing certificates uh, and so on. And um, if everything was perfect, the People's Bank would have, would have generally paid. But they haven't in this case because, uh, as I say, they had a court order. Yeah. And what can they do? Yeah, so it's very, very unusual, right, to have a court order because when you are importing uh, at that stage you decide on the standards and mm. what the documentations are needed. Mm. The bank looks at documentation. Mm. If the documentation is in order, the banks pay and clear the goods. If there are discrepancies, the banks don't, you see, because that is, it is a breach of the agreement, yes. right. So, so, this is an unusual situation where they have gone to basically a court. It is uh, unusual because the um I put it to you that it is the national interest at stake uh, and we couldn't possibly import um, fungi laden um, fertilizer. I, I completely agree with you because we, we, we can't be importing fungi laden fertilizer which will cause huge environmental problems but yeah. then then uh, the people who are importing are also responsible yeah. right whether their documentation really was complete or incomplete, mm. right? They are responsible for it. And particularly when it comes to food and fertilizer, specific, specifically biofertilizer, right? Mm. Uh, particularly they needed to be careful. But for us this raises uh, lots of issues. One is whether the importer, right, made the mistake of not having the properly laid out standards in the documentation and the requirement. To, to put it brutally, Frank, yeah. did, they, did the importer know, uh, was he out of, were, were they out of their depth? Did they not know what they were doing? I mean, that's not an excuse for us. No, no you, excuse you know, at because, all. Because, they ought to be sacked. Yeah, because for us, you can't even take an apple, mm. right? To lots of countries in the world, yeah. right? They will tell you to uh, 
throw it right at the point of uh, entry yeah. right because they want to protect their environment or they might sometimes if it's a biological related thing they will say it has to be in quarantine mm. sometimes even if you take a, a, a animal even a pet cat or dog or whatever mm. sometimes mm. right there may be a requirement to put them in quarantine mm. you see uh, uh, we we are we have now come to the place post COVID that human beings are also in quarantine. Right. right when you go to another country, yeah. where that's how much they want to protect their people plus their environment. You see, that's how strict this is. Right. So so the, I think the whole idea of actually importing bio fertilizer as a idea itself was uh, really a crooked idea. You see, this government has taken such ridiculous decisions like banning chemical fertilizers. Yeah. without a scientific basis and this is not what Iran Vikram Ratne is saying no this is what the professionals the scientists the soil scientists the fertilizer scientists yeah. and I just saw uh, uh, two three days ago even Professor Madhuma Bandara who is a specialist on soil at Peradeni University was advisor to the ministry basically has resigned or being forced to resign or something yeah right so anybody who actually makes their case right from the standpoint of their study, their learning, their education, mm. right? If it isn't falling in line with what the government wants to do politically, basically they are shunning them out. So you're either with us or you're not. Yes, and it's it, it, there's no basis, there's no science behind a lot of these decisions. So this fertilizer decision itself was a mess. Then to make up, they go and import biofertilizer. Then basically presumably Sri Lankan scientists or Sri Lankan standard institutions looking at this probably said that this fertilizer is not suitable to come into the country you just can't get this fertilizer into the country right maybe that happened and then immediately there's a problem on their hands the importer has a problem right mm. and the importer is finding a way out and then the importer uh, goes to uh, courts and then the courts hears you know the preliminary evidence and probably gives any interim you know kind of order and the bank has to immediately then follow it mm. it raises an interesting legal question as well and and the legal question it raises is right lcs and all work on inter international trade works on international mm. right uh, law right basis of international law yeah and here we have the situation of a, a, a local uh, court giving an order so it raises a question clearly in a democracy right in a sovereign state like ours mm. right uh, uh, clearly we have to uh, basically swear by allegiance to our constitution which is the primary law and then by all the other laws that have been enacted and passed by parliament right mm. so uh, uh, I think looking at from the point of view of the bank officials right uh, they are restricted, right, from the point of view of the bank officials. Yeah. I've been listening to you, and what, I'm, what strikes me, and what you're really saying is, that there are all these professionals who know what they're doing, working in the banks and so on, they know what they're doing. And then uh, they get instructions from people who are, uh, you know, half-baked. Uh, for want of a better word, uh, they are nothing other than Muppets because they don't know what they're doing. And they, because they don't know what they're doing and they think they know what they're doing, uh, they are dragging Sri Lanka and our reputation, our professional reputation. I'm sure you'll agree that our bankers are uh, much sought after all over the world. Uh, we have more accountants in this country than uh, other than uh, the United Kingdom. And, you know, we are held in some esteem. And it is these bunch of Muppets who are uh, dragging Sri Lanka into uh, an abyss of despair and unprofessionalism. Am I about right when I'm saying this? Yeah, I, I would say so I, I would largely agree with what you are saying, right? And, and it puts these professionals in a real fix. Now, when you take the bank, for example, right, and government institutions, generally the political appointments are at the top. Mm. Right at the top in a government institution, for example, uh, a corporation, the chairman and the board is generally appointed by the government of the day. But below that level, right, you generally have all the professionals working mm. from the CEO, right, at all the different senior levels, right to the bottom. And they know they are generally trained in the banks in particular, 
right? The, the, the top officials are bankers, they have been to university, right, in the management, they have been to lots of training, international training on credit, on risk, on international trade, on various things, mm. and they know exactly what they are doing and also well versed in the law and so forth. So these uh, uh, political yeah. people basically put their finger into it and mess up the life of these professionals. And on that note, uh, messing up is the note. Uh, let's go for a short break. Let's take a quick look at the headlines for this evening's primetime news. And we'll be back. We're asking Mr. Eran Vikramaratna whether the interference from the country's uh, uh, embassies, like from the Chinese and even the Malaysians, whether that is not an infringement, an impingement on the sovereign state of Sri Lanka. We'll see you on the other side. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukdali. And welcome back to Newsline Live. I'm in conversation with Mr. Eran Vikramaratna. Thank you for your questions by SMS, please. 0772 300305. Card coming up on the screen. Thanks to our wonderful producer, Harshina. Uh, is the primary problem that there wasn't a clear stipulation in the contract to purchase about the fact that any contamination was unacceptable? That's obviously what you're saying, right? Yes, I, I, I agree. So it depends on the documentation. Mm. And the documentation definitely should have had that mm. because fertilizer can damage our soil and it could really cause a huge problem for agriculture and that we should be extremely cautious about it. And that should have been in the documentation. And if there's a violation of that documentation, it doesn't matter which country or who the supplier is, we shouldn't be accepting it. The question hmm. is, if the documentation didn't have that, right, then clearly there is a problem on the part of the importer. Right. Yeah. But now that's granted. But now let's move on to the actions of the Chinese embassy in Sri Lanka, whose um, economic and commercial office, it's all part of the same embassy, right? They can't be any different, can they? They should be blacklisting this company. King Dao Sea Wind Biotech Group Company Limited, because they are the ones who supplied it, and they supplied it with some fungi-laden substance, which is, which is not wasn't acceptable. Why? Why do you think the Chinese are not banning them, blacklisting them? Uh, clearly, uh, the Chinese are working in, with the interest of the Chinese. Chindao, I do it's beg your worse. pardon. It's pronounced Chindao Sea Wind Biotech. Company Private Limited. Thank you to Shahan Ranatunga, who's, yeah. who's uh, not agreeing that I speak enough Chinese. I don't. Qingdao. Qingdao. Now what? No. Yeah. What, what about Qingdao? Yeah, yeah. You're excused for not having a Chinese accent. Right. Uh, however, uh, I would say that uh, the, uh, clearly the Chinese uh, embassy is standing behind their Chinese company, mm. right? Uh, and their interest. The, the only thing is, this is a commercial transaction, right? And uh, as I said, I called it unusual, mm. right? That generally. Are you being polite? I'm being polite. Right. I, Can for, you be upfront and straightforward, yeah, like news for, I would say for companies, right, uh, to have their governments through their embassies really make public pronouncements, I think is not called for, you see. Uh, I think the Chinese don't play cricket, so therefore they wouldn't know the term if we say it's not cricket. Yeah, so I, I, I think there may be different perspectives here for us mm. because we are a democracy, right? We have basically democratic values. We are an open society. Uh, we are not going to be ruled by a single party or a single dictator, mm. right? These uh, democratic traditions in this country are strong. Mm. And anybody trying to mess with that will ultimately figure out, right, that that's going to come to an end. So uh, other countries, maybe their political systems are different to us. So therefore, mm. the way they uh, uh, basically govern, the way they think about these issues, the way they go about these issues can be different to us. Like, like, like we respect them, it's their decision for, for their countries. They, they Others need to understand that ours is different, mm. right? Ours is a more open society, it's a liberal society. People in this country, every citizen. We have the, lo uh, the oldest democracy uh, in this part of the world. Yeah, we are the oldest democracy in this part of the world. We are the first country 
right next to Britain, where women were given universal adult franchise. Mm. We right, uh, so our but parliament think, is. Do you think this is all double Dutch to the poor Chinese who don't know what democracy? Yeah, so is. There are, I mean that's fine. I mean the other systems are there. If it's acceptable to their people, that's mm. fine. And and our citizens have a right to information in this mm. country, mm. right? And by law. They have a right to information. And you see this every day when you find that democracy is being subverted in some way, right? Not just political parties, mm. people rise to it, right? If you see that there is no transparency, people rise to it. Mm. Now we have seen this in this Yuga Danavi, in this LNG transaction, yeah. right? Which there has been very little information, right? Very little information provided. And, and the government is contracting to basically take LNG through an uh, investor. Now that investor company happens to be American. So my, my issue is not whether it's Indian, Chinese or American. Mm. My issue is the principles of democracy, right? The principles that the people are sovereign, mm. right? Uh, we are not going to back down from those principles whether it is Chinese fertilizer or American energy. We are standing up for those principles and we will not anybody violate those principles. So if others have their system, that's fine. So mm. I, I think it's unfortunate, mm. right, that uh, uh, they made this statement publicly when this is an issue. I think they could have resolved it by getting the commercial authorities in both countries to resolve the commercial issue. Well, the, you know, and as m many uh, messages have uh, po been pointing out this evening, uh, the, the fact is that this uh, you know, this fertilizer that was sent by Qingdao Seaweed Biotech Group Company Limited tested for the presence of harmful pathogens not once but twice in tests carried out by Sri Lanka's National Plant Quarantine Service. So, are they telling us that they doubt our professionals at our quarantine service? I mean, that's not acceptable. Yeah, so, so, so the, the question is, uh, on one hand, they are saying that, right? Uh, uh, on the other hand, as I said, uh, we really don't know what happened on the documentation. But whichever way, mm. this is a commercial transaction and it should have been resolved commercially, right? And I don't think that there was, there was any really reason, right, to, uh, uh, to make it public like it has become made public and been basically to hold the People's Bank responsible when the People's Bank have correctly right, uh, upheld the view mm. that there is a court order and that they are, therefore that they are basically uh, going the court order and the People's Bank in their statement have also said that they are basically when, when the court issues a different order that they will uh, follow that order too. I think you walk straight into this one. Are we really a democracy after the new task force? One country, one law was formed. You walk straight into it. <laughs> yeah, so th this is a, a misunderstanding. What do we mean by one country, one law? Right? Can I answer that? <laughs> okay, okay. I want to tell you, yeah. one country, one law yeah. doesn't mean that we have somebody who was convicted in a court of law uh, for contempt of court, uh, uh, turned up like some sort of madman, you know, inside a court and then decided to, uh, to abuse people inside the court, <laughs> inside the court or in the vicinity of the courthouse, right? And then he gets convicted and um, guess what then? You know what happened. Yes. We all know what happened. Yes. He got a presidential pardon. Yeah, so th that's very unfortunate. And he now heads the task force. Yeah, so it's really unfortunate. The appointment is unfortunate for all the reasons you gave. Yeah. But I would go even beyond that and say the person who appointed him is the president of the country. Yeah. It's unfortunate that the president did that. And one country, one law is not to do with the inadequacies in the law. Mm. It is really to do the practice of the law, the practice of the law. You see, where you are basically always you find that if you are politically powerful or if you are powerful because of your wealth, the law treats you differently. We have seen that recently in many, many different cases as well, yeah. where the powerful never get into a problem. Then they have gone one step further. Right now, wh what are they doing? Right, what they are doing is right, and particularly we saw this in the last few days, right? Because the, because 
the, the, the cardinal and, the, and, and some of the Christian priests have been asking, uh, like the politicians, like myself, who have been asking for a while, who was really behind the Easter bombing. The latest we have seen is they have basically taken uh, uh, Reverend Father Cyril Gamini, right, mm. in, in for questioning by the CID. Yeah. How ridiculous, because it's based on a complaint made by an intelligence officer. And the reference is, complaint is also to the CID, which is the intelligence department of the country, right? So that, that is completely wrong. If somebody mm. felt that their reputation was at stake, in this situation, they could have filed right a fundamental rights application, taken mm. it to the courts of the country, right? Otherwise, there is a conflict because the conflict is right. The complaint is about the intelligence, right? And the investigation is also being given to the intelligence. I want to state very clearly, and here I'm speaking on behalf of the party I belong to, the SJB, the mm. Samagi Jana Bala Vege. Mm. We stand, we completely condemn, right? That, that this father has been brought before uh, the CID and he has been questioned. Hmm. We condemn that completely. And, and we also condemn the fact, you know, we, we're trying to hide behind things, intimidate people, right, then bring them before the courts. This is totally unacceptable, right. If they have a grievance, go to the courts, right, don't go to the CID, go to the courts and then let the courts decide if somebody has done something wrong. Aaron Wickramatna, thank you very much. Uh, do you enjoy yourself on Newsline? Thank you for inviting me. But do you enjoy yourself? I, <laughs> I don't call enjoying what I do, but I certainly feel uh, uh, c content with the fact that I am fighting for causes where other people are being severely disadvantaged. The Republic, you mean? In the Republic, yeah. That's the way it was on Newsline Live. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we wish you a uh, wonderful evening ahead of you. And as always, God bless you.